Happy, happy turkey day, hunger pangs will go away when you hear a pilgrim say it's happy turkey day. Well, it's uh, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Today we are talking about probably the most notable and important and historic Thanksgiving film of all, of course, Adam's Family Values. So I think that Adam's Family Values might be the perfect Thanksgiving movie. There's no schmaltzy overwrought family drama about coming together around the holidays and burying the hatchet and letting bygones be bygones. Actually, just the opposite. There's a... Uh, Quite a bit about holding on to grudges and eradicating your enemies, I think. I shall not submit. I shall conquer. I shall rise. It's just a wonderful film about a uh, beautiful, loving, and very functional family coming together to avert the machinations of a Black Widow serial killer, uh, although mostly by accident. In fact, they actually kind of seem to be rooting for her in the end of the movie. Goodbye, everybody. Wish me luck. Good luck! Yeah. It's one of my favorite things about the movie, is that they managed to never abandon the central premise of the Adamses, right? Like, even as she's got them strapped into electric chairs and says, wish me luck, they're just like, yeah, good luck! These movies are so good. I'm sorry. A Angelica Houston and Ra Raul Julia are so good as Morticia and uh, Gomez Adams. It's, it's tough to imagine almost anybody else in those roles. Of course, I'm speaking from somebody who did not grow up in the 60s with the original TV series, so maybe older generations feel the other way around that. I revisited Adam's Family Values recently and I hadn't for years. It is an amazing movie. I couldn't believe how tight the script was. There are like many jokes per minute in this thing. It's so quick. Uh, I have to wonder how much of that was improvisation and how much of it was written because it is just rapid fire, unbelievable how everything is a double entendre all the way through. It's, it's really wonderful. The one unfortunate thing about the movie, uh, which is true of all films made in the early 90s under the auspices of the Hammer Act, is that it does have uh, a original rap song for its end credits that details back to kind of verbatim the script. Uh, but that was the law at the time. Uh, the Hammer Act wasn't repealed until I think 1994. Um, so all movies that were made uh, at that time and which were eligible for rating by the MPAA had to end with a, uh, such a rap song. Men in Black. Right. Well black. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. So, I mean, Will Smith does that. It's not because of the law. He just does it because he's Will Smith, you know. He, he, he's, he's, he, you know, old habits die hard, you know. He's a real... Well, he championed the Hammer Act in con Congress. I think that he tried to keep it a law, yeah. <laughs> This movie, although very closely associated with Thanksgiving, and it was released, I think, November 18th, if I'm not mistaken, so it was released for Thanksgiving, does not have a Thanksgiving dinner in it. It's not about a family getting together for Thanksgiving. In fact, the plot seems to take place in the summer. Uh, we know that because the Adams children are sent away to summer camp at Camp Chippewa, America's foremost facility for privileged young adults. And we're all here to learn, to grow, and to just plain have fun! Because that's what being privileged is all about! So the, the main nod to Thanksgiving in the movie comes in the form of the end of summer play as staged by the uh, owners and counselors of Camp Chippewa, which depicts a very romanticized, uh, white-centric version of the first Thanksgiving. I am so glad we invited the Chippewas join us for this holiday meal. Uh, as a musical, featuring wonderful numbers such as Happy Turkey Day and Eat Me. Eat us because we're good and dead. Uh, they cast Wednesday Adams as Pocahontas, leader of the Chippewa tribe. Also, I don't think that the Chippewas were at Plymouth either, actually. I think they did just like 100% wrong. I know Pocahontas is in Virginia, not Plymouth Colony. And I also am pretty sure the Chippewa are a um, uh, Great Plains tribe. I could be wrong on that. It's in like Chicago area. That's the joke. Wednesday takes the opportunity to uh, correct the record and I suppose history. I've decided to scalp you. Burns the place to the ground and escapes briefly and sadly. Uh, her and her, her beau, David Krumholtz, are separated. Uh, they seem to go in separate directions for a bit there. Some things happened. He wound up a pornographer later in life. 
I was looking through the film for drinks to make, and I see a few moments that I could have taken inspiration from. When Wednesday first arrives at Camp Chippewa, we see her take a pull from a bottle of poison. All right, doesn't give me a whole lot. At the bachelorette party, we see Morticia with a glass of something black and smoking. Okay. At the end of the film, Fester and Dementia, it means insanity, uh, are seen sharing a drink. The day after the wedding, Gomez fixes up a hair of the dog, which he refers to as hair of the pup, for baby Pubert, the littlest Adams, who apparently is a little hungover from partying way too hard at the wedding the night before. What would we see go into that drink? We see a whole egg, some, I think, hot sauce, although in that vein, I suppose it could have been fermented blood, or let's just go with hot sauce. Let's say hot sauce. And some vodka. Uh, so why don't we just shake that up and give it a taste? It doesn't actually sound half bad. Gomez puts it in a baby bottle. That, sucking that through a little nipple seems unpleasant. So I'm gonna go with a glass. So we're gonna crack an egg and drop the whole thing into this tin. A lot of people in the comments give me some crap about the way I crack my eggs. They want me to do them here on the rim of a tin or something like that. The thing is, is that that is sharp and it does make sense, right? You wanna crack something, you do that. But if you do that, it will stab through and the edge of your crack will have little bits of shell little bits of shell along where it breaks, and those could drop in pretty easily. However, if you are, and then I'm like, okay, you know, sometimes this works better than others, on a flat surface, tap, tap, put a few little taps there, you can get a good crack that goes cleanly around the egg. This one is not my best, but it's almost like the way you, you're, you can get into a coconut, you know, where if you tap it, tap it, tap it, on the exact equator of the coconut, you will put a crack that goes straight around it. And so that's why I crack my eggs, where and why, how I crack my eggs. And this has been Egg Cracking with Greg. Let's get cracking. We see some, what I think, I presume is hot sauce in there, and specifically the hot sauce we see go in is dark in color. Now, a lot of your hot sauces, like your shirachas and your Tabascos, are very bright red. Typically, I think that the darker hot sauces have a lot of smoky chipotle flavors in it, which works out great for me because I love a chipotle sauce. Uh, so I'm using Cholula chipotle sauce. I have three healthy dashes. Uh, okay, so we see you can dump some vodka in there. I'm going to throw in two ounces of Absolute. We will dry shake this, but I am not convinced that this is a thing that will benefit from dry shaking. And I wish I knew the specifics of that because I feel like it would be something, it would be a good time for me to be authoritative on the subject matter, but I'm not. Yeah, dry shake it, can't hurt, can't hurt. One hole, uh, one cracked. I'm gonna put this in a small tumbler. So I really don't know what kind of drink this is. Double strain this uh, into my cup here, into my little tumbler. And let's try Gomez's hair of the pup. Smells like nothing, I get no nose at all. It's not bad. A little salty, believe it or not. Um, yeah, it's it, the, the smoky Chipotle thing that I've got going on in this version is not bad at all. It is a light and frothy drink. Honestly, it's salty though, which tastes off and I kind of wish it didn't. Hmm. I think I can make a better version of this. Um, and I think I'm gonna do that now. Yeah, I think that what this needs is actually a little bit of sweetness, almost making it kind of a, a barbecue thing. I think that'll help it a lot. Let's try that. Start again with another egg.
There you go. That's that clean break I was going to be going for. Uh, I think it should have... Yeah, I think two dashes of Peixos Bitters would be nice here. Put a little bit of that anise flavoring into it. And three dashes again of the hot sauce. I, I think the heat was just right. I think three dashes of hot sauce, you know, three shakes of the Cholula, whatever comes out is what comes out. It seems to be about right. I think it needed a little sweetness. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with a half an ounce of simple syrup and maybe we'll adjust from there, but I think that'll be close enough to make a determination about a future recipe here. I think that just doing that is really going to add a lot more dimension to this drink. Uh, and two ounces of vodka. They will dry shake this again. Uh, we'll throw some ice in our big tin. One large, one small, well, one cracked. Uh, I'm gonna throw it in this sour coop. That's what Reedell calls it. They call it their sour glass. I just think it's a nice looking coop with a flared out edge. Double strain that. some kind of garnish. Oh. oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, thing. Yeah, actually, these will be fine. That wasn't staged. That actually looked great. Heck yes. Uh, all right, let's try uh, this improved hair of the pup. Let's see how this came out. If it is, in fact, improved. It does taste a bit like uh, barbecue potato chips. I like that a lot. It's got that sweet and spicy thing uh, that barbecue has. It tastes, it tastes a lot like a barbecue cocktail, actually. <laughs> the anisette is present, but not the driving flavor. It's just kind of a little bit there. And, and you know, I should, I'm giving maybe short shrift to Peixos. Peixos has a lot of flavors in it. I think that the, for me, the one that comes through the strongest is that it's a little bit anisette. Um, as opposed to like Angostura, which really doesn't have any anisette in it at all, I don't think. Go back in there, it's cool. It's got a nice texture too, it's like egg froth. Mm. Yeah, it's like a unusual combination of things. It's very Adamsy in that way, because it's like silky and creamy and like has this um, velvety texture, which you don't really associate with things that taste smoky and spicy. You know, that barbecue flavor, which is very much what this tastes like. The vodka presents no flavor at all because it's vodka, it's just alcohol in here. So it really is just kind of a liquid velvet barbecue. Velvet barbecue would actually be a really good name for this drink if it wasn't already called the hair of the pup. The velvet barbecue. That would be the name of a, um, a weekly drag show in Alabama. It's actually really good. <laughs> this is a mild deviation from what we see Gomez making in the film. And in truth, since we know films are edited and are not documentaries of what's occurring in real time, it's very possible that in the intervening cutaways of the baby watching him make the drink, these other ingredients went in. So we can even assume that this is exactly what's in Gomez's hair of the pup. Or at least it should be, because it makes it much better. Uh, certainly, I would rather wake up and have this than that. This is not bad for, by any stretch of imagination. There's a lot of, if you sip this exactly as it is, you would probably come to the same conclusion I did, which is that there's actually potential here. It's just sort of missing the sugar in the simple syrup, and I could see maybe less, but I'm very happy with a half an ounce on this. The sugar in the simple syrup acts, one, to counteract whatever perception is 
of saltiness that you're getting in this, which is unpleasant. I definitely don't want this a drink that tastes salty or briny, really. Uh, you do use salt sometimes as a flavor enhancer for other ingredients. In this case, the sugar is doing that. The sugar here is kind of allowing you to perceive more fully the barbecue, smoky chipotle flavoring that is present here. I like this a lot. I don't know that it's ever what I'm going to say, you know what I want today? A hair of the pup. I don't think I'll make it myself, but I would never send it back and I would never be unhappy if somebody made one for me. It's a very cool drink. Happened to work out very well. If this is a drink that you enjoy, I bet you would enjoy my wake up juice take where I made wake up juice from Back to the Future part three. There'll be a link to that in the pinned comment below and also in the end screen of this video. All the watches I wear on how to drink are provided courtesy of my good friends at Crown and Caliber. Uh, if you're interested in watches, you should check them out. There's a link in the pinned comment below. All my barware is provided courtesy of Barfly Mixology Gear. And there is a link for that in the pinned comment below if you want to buy any of the tools you see me using on the show. Today we made Hair of the Pup, as made uh, by Gomez Adams and Adams Family Values for Baby Pubert, who is uh, nursing a hangover in his bassinet there. Well, I hope you're having a great Thanksgiving. I will see I'm turning into Sean Connery and I can't say S's. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic Thanksgiving this year and that you and your own Adams family are uh, warm and cozy in your giant haunted mansion. Um, you all live in giant haunted mansions, I presume. And you're watching this show on a crystal ball. Academia. He has, I think that Gomez actually has great fashion sense. He has a lot of excellent smoking jackets. I'm not a huge fan of the chalk striped suit, but he has a few like, nice smoking jackets. I'm, I'm looking for a good smoking jacket. I don't smoke. I just feel like that and an ascot could really be my look.